Okay, so baseball has new rules for next year. I want to get your thoughts on no more fielders being shifted all over the field, larger bases, and timer for the pitcher so they don't take so long. Well, I've, I've talked to a few friends of mine who are in AAA right now. The season just ended, and so we've been talking about some of these rule changes. They said the timer is just awesome. They said, dude, you're not going to believe how quick the game goes. And don't get me wrong. People are not just going to turn on baseball because it's two hours and 30 minutes as opposed to three hours and 15 minutes. It's the product. And mm. the product, if the product's good, we'll sit there all day. And if people don't believe me, I sit around and watch this Jeffrey Dahmer shit all day, every day. And Is it I'm, really that good? <laughs> it's, it's pretty good. Okay. It's a little creepy and a little weird because I feel like they're like throwing the his sexuality on me. But oh, yeah. And the gays don't want to claim him. Yep. Too late. <laughs> Too late. He's yours. <laughs> He's yours. You can have him. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, but they've been telling me that the, the adjustments are really good. The bases are for safety. But the big change that everybody's going to notice, other than the game time, is the shift. Because we're talking about ground balls that are right back to the pitcher's mound or to the, you know, past the pitcher are now going to be hits the way that they were when my dad played or any time before that. So it was really cool to see that because a lot of times I'll watch baseball and the view you have on television is the view of the hitter. When the hitter makes contact with the ball and it goes right back at the pitcher at like a hundred miles an hour, your first instinct is that's always a hit, but it's changing the way you see. It's changing the way you see the game because with the shift, a ball can be hit. You're like, that's a hit. That's a double. That's whatever. And they're just standing over there and you just had no idea. Well, to me, the product's better when we have an understanding right off the rip what we're looking at. So I'm excited for it. There should be more hits. I know I see it in the chat that the shift rule is silly. I get it. I totally understand it. I understand the argument that it's silly. But baseball has to look at this and say from an entertainment standpoint, what would be more entertaining? Allowing these guys to shift and keeping it fair? Or do we manipulate it a little bit get a little mickey mouse with it and get more action because when when um I, i'm forgetting who it was uh, bob gibson was dominating was dominating they lower the mound they're like this guy's throwing too hard nobody can hit so let's go ahead and lower the mound make an adjustment let these guys get them some type of advantage and i'm all for it to be honest with you because baseball right now is getting lapped by football it'll never catch up but at the mm-hmm. same time they got to do something they, they really do. Do you think the pitch clock would put pressure on pitchers at all? Like, is it something they would actually see, like, in their field of vision? Like, so it's going to be 15 seconds when bases are empty and 20 seconds when runners are on. And and what do you think is the average pitch time now for most pitchers? It varies, like, crazy. There's some pitchers where it's not just that they take a long time to throw the ball. I mean – they literally will grab the ball, throw it, have the ball thrown back to them, adjust their socks, their hat, their glove. They'll wipe their arms. They'll grab the rosin bag behind the mound. They'll step on the mound. And I'm like, I love baseball. That's not baseball. That's not baseball. I don't come to an NBA game to watch LeBron James adjust his headband his jersey, all that. Mm -hmm. I watch him. I come to watch him play basketball. If you like basketball, you want to watch basketball. That's not baseball right there. I'm essentially just watching a dude adjust his jock strap. And I'm like, this game needs to speed up because this dude's just taking forever. So I think for some people it'll be noticeable and for others, it just won't be. And by the way, I see it in the chat from Chris. He says the problem's not the game. It's society because we've sped up. That's true. Baseball will always slow down because society is just, okay, let me click the next show or let me get my next bit of entertainment. Throw me a commercial. Everything's so fast. We go on Amazon, we pay for something. It's there in hours. We're not prepared anymore to sit there for four hours and watch something that could take three hours for anything to happen. It's We don't want to watch some big wound up thing. You watch a porno, you skip to the end. That that's what we don't. I skip to the credits. Yeah, to I want to see who worked on it. Yeah, <laughs> you want to see what mics were used. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's it's that is an issue, and that's I couldn't agree more. It, it is an issue that people want to see stuff quicker. 
and baseball can't can deliver it. Yep. Okay. Fieldy wants you to explain what the shift is for those that may not know. That's talking about the how close the people in the infield come in. Right. So the shift is essentially having data that a certain hitter only really hits the ball for the most part to one side of the field. So common sense would be, and for people who don't want the shift to go away, all your fielders should just go stand where he always hits the ball. And if he's going to always hit it over there, the only way that that guy's going to get a hit is if he makes an adjustment, and hits the ball the other way. That's essentially the gist. And the argument is that it's too difficult or that it's not entertaining to watch them try to beat the shift. So let's just get rid of the shift and, all those balls that that guy was hitting over there 90% of the time, 98% of the time, if he hits it well enough, it's going to be a hit. And it's a little weird. I agree. Um, you can argue that it shouldn't happen, but entertainment wise, it's going to be more entertaining. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, from Richard Bean, ask Gary if he thinks analytics has ruined the game. Does he think the rules, the rule changes will bring back the stolen base and defensive whiz plays? What's a whiz play? Um, so this is the thing. Analytics did ruin sports, all of it. Every sport except for football has essentially been ruined by analytics. And that does not mean analytics shouldn't be ruined. And this is why analytics just proved to everybody. What's the best way to play the game, the most effective way to play. And that never like hardly ever means it's more entertaining. We are not entertained by shifting. We're not entertained by three point shots in the NBA. That stuff's boring. It's repetitive. We see it every play. We want to see variance. People said that we loved the home runs in the 90s with the steroid era. No, we liked mm -hmm. action. There was action. There was stuff going on. Now there's the analytics say the best way to score is to try to hit a home run every single at bat, every single game. That's what it says. Well, that's not fun. I want to see guys try to hit, you know, try to go the other way. I want to see guys maybe bunt every once in a while if the situation calls for it. I want to see guys steal double cuts to home, the catcher get run over. All every, Analytics say all that stuff is terrible, all of it. But we wanted to see action, and analytics made an environment where we were better and it was less likely to see action. So, yeah, it, analytics did ruin the game, games, and there's nothing we could do about it now because we can't undo what we already know. Oh, no, we can't go back. Okay. Uh, from Michael Sallow, don't forget pitchers are only allowed two disengagements per plate appearance. That is huge in my opinion. Yeah. What Who is wants to stand there? What is a disengagement? Oh, just from like, you're just from, I guess, stopping what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, guys will be standing in the batter's box and they will literally just step out and you're like, why, why that happen? And they'll step out and they'll just take their helmet off take something out their eye that's not there and then get back in the batter's box. So it's really just like psychologically, we just kind of look away for a second because this guy's fixing his dick. Mm -hmm. I don't know what he's doing. TikTok ruined us. Yeah, if this was 19, this is from Chris. If this was 1940, people in the stands would be enjoying the day out, the aura of the game today. If they are not on their phones, checking their bets, fantasy, et cetera, they can't handle it. Unreal. Yeah, fantasy sports really got football on the map. I mean, we're talking – Everybody, all my friends are all talking about fantasy football. It's all people talk about two weeks before the season. That's I'm just getting blown up by text of people saying, Hey man, they're obsessed with fantasy football. You want to be in our league? And I, I just go there and donate 60 bucks and I never see that money again. That's so. like me when I do the death pools. I'm just like, all right, like <laughs> I haven't done one in years. Um, okay. Let's it's unreal. To Matthew Hammond, the problem with MLB is that you do not see it on broadcast channels. In the summer, it should be on every channel at least once a week. Stop hiding it on ESPN, Apple TV, Amazon Prime, and regional networks. But do they not? Would they not make money? I mean, why do they do it that way? I mean, realistically, I don't think being on national broadcast is going to change baseball's. Like, it's not going to change baseball's fate. The issue is blackouts. I mean, if you live if you live in New York and you want to watch the Yankees, I mean, th they'll be like, yeah, it's not going to be on ESPN. It's blacked out. Well, then you have to buy the channel to have it on Yes Network. That's weird. Why would people who live in a state have to pay money to watch their team? It shouldn't happen. You, you, you just shouldn't have to have cable or you shouldn't have to buy a package to watch the game. 
it, it's just, to me, it's just strange. Uh, and it's entirely too expensive. They'll, they'll have it be 200 bucks. I know the NBA did a little something with it this year. It's not going to matter, but they'll show up and they're like, yeah, if you buy NBA 2K, we'll give you the pack. We'll give you the basketball package. I think it was free or super cheap. And okay. baseball is just, they need to do more things to allow people to watch. What do you, and I think we've talked about this, like the last time you were on, like what they could do to, I guess, like broaden the appeal of baseball, although it feels like you shouldn't have to do that, but it's almost like more clip. That's the thing is like, if you clip it and advertise it by the clips and the action, well, you still have the game, which takes as long as it takes. And people are going to still have like their ADD brain complaints about it. So it's tricky. I think baseball should just stay after these changes, just keep it the same. Let's just preserve the game of baseball. Just because people aren't watching it as much as the NFL doesn't mean that something has to happen. That's something that people need to understand is baseball is a thinking man's game and people just don't like to think anymore, really. So that doesn't mean your game has to change a ton. Baseball is fun to watch if you love baseball. If you don't love baseball, you're not going to watch it. It's always been that way. And people are loving baseball less, you know, maybe it's the product on the field, maybe, but overall, that doesn't mean you got to change. Sometimes you just have to look at people and say, well, this is our game. If you like it, then you like it. Right. I agree. From Matthew Hammond, three true outcomes ruin baseball, no balls in play. I don't really understand what this means. So three true outcomes is essentially saying a strikeout, a walk or a home run. Those oh. are the three outcomes. And it's true. And a lot of that is pitchers understanding that velocity, it goes hand in hand with strikeouts. The, the harder you throw, the more likely you are to strike somebody out. It's just the math of it. So now if people know that, well, then why wouldn't you prepare yourself to throw 100 miles an hour? So that's what they did. Everyone throws 100. And it's harder to make contact with the ball. It's not just about making adjustments. It's, it got harder to make adjustments. So now people are just like, the only way we're going to score, we're not going to hit three hits in a row off a dude throwing 100. Let's just hit one home run. And that's what they did. And so now all you see is walks because those guys are wild throwing 100 and home runs and strikeouts, a lot of strikeouts, a lot. So, so yeah. Did players just get stronger? Like what led to more like faster pitches? Basically. They did or get stronger. Yeah. The the training got better. We got more efficient. Is there's really using video, slow-mo, 4K, all that. You can slow down your arm action and figure out, okay, I'm losing a couple miles an hour right here. Make that a little adjustment. And then mechanics start to get similar from pitcher to pitcher because they realize this is the, maybe the best way to do something. So you start to see how can I maximize this body and throw harder? And that's what they do. You should do everything in your power to maximize. If you can maximize and your and your maximized talent is not throwing 100, maybe you throw 93, maybe you never make the major leagues. But some guys will throw 92, 93, maybe get on a throwing program in the offseason, try to throw harder, and then next thing you know, the dude's throwing 99 to throw him in the bullpen. That's just the way baseball has been now. So it is harder to hit, and that is just encouraged three true outcomes. You know whose body we want to maximize? Tyler O'Neill, oh right? <laughs> you really think he's that good looking? Ah. Love you guys. Thank you for the chats. Thank you for the comments. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye. All right. Love you guys. God, I don't even want to leave. This candle smells so good. I don't want to leave. All right. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye. Love you all. Join the Discord. Feet. Love you all. Wow. You guys are awesome. Bye guys. Bye. Now I'm really leaving. Love you. Bye.